Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Zena's guys. producing tonight, so you guys give her props. Yay, Z, coming back from the birthday week and you know, going full steam ahead. All right, great. So uh, first we're going to talk about the 11-year um, anniversary of the war in Afghanistan. That Sunday marked the end of 11 years at war, the longest war in American history. Um, and we wanted to talk a little bit about your feelings about the war and also the protest, um, the Vets for Peace protest in um, New York City. They had a rally and they had a lot of veterans telling their stories and you can see from the video there they did a um, flower ceremony. And they were abruptly interrupted by the NYPD because they went over the 10 o'clock deadline um, and the NYPD came in and arrested everyone. I believe it was 25, 25 people were arrested. Yeah, and something like that. 25, 27, something like that. Yeah, and um, I'm going to get the link here. For and I thought, um, did everybody get a chance to watch that? Uh, because the lead into it was so, so nice. I thought it was a perfect action. You know, it was very peaceful, very poignant. You know, the flowers um in the reading of the names it kind of drove the point home and then when the police of course interrupted it that was you know the contrast that that we look for to show the difference between reason and unreason because there is no way no how that any of that could have been justified they you know they were in the park um past the deadline but, you know, it would have been, um, I think it would have been a good PR move for the city to allow them that opportunity uh, to celebrate and would have been a good, good bridge building effort. But, you know, we saw how that turned out. So Yeah, know. exactly. And, you know, it's really getting to the point where you, you just got to think, why are they doing this to people? Um, because, I mean, it's one thing to, you know, for somebody to, you can kind of understand if they're taking over a park and they're not allowing public access to the park and that kind of stuff, but this is not something that was going to last. They could have allowed them to finish their ceremony, finish reading the names, um, you know, it was, it was overkill. And why be arrested for trespassing? That's another question I have. The idea that getting arrested for trespassing versus getting just a PAL ticket um, and why they're cracking down so hard. Um, so uh. what do you guys think about that? Should, should there and was it reasonable for there to be a hard, fast line at 10 o'clock? Or should the city have exercised a little latitude in uh, the spirit of goodwill and also recognizing the vets and also how in the world can you even justify arresting vets um, that were there after service and trying to celebrate the fallen exactly. it seems seems to be kind of and kind the of other question too that i have is you know this didn't even make news you know, I mean, it, this wasn't even in the conversation over the past week. Very little mainstream media spoke about the fact that we've been in this I, this war um, for 11 years now. Um, and you know, in my in my mind, I think this should be a headline across the country: 25 vets arrested for protesting the war. And, and the why longest, is that not happening? The longest war in American history. Yes. And, and for what point? But a very unpopular war. I mean, it's very unpopular to American people. So. Okay. Looks like we're getting a call in here now. Z, I'm going to answer it up. Okay. Call from John Zangus, occupied. Accept. Press 1. To send a voicemail. Good evening, John. Can you hear me okay? Hey, John. 
Yes, I can. Thank you for calling in. How are you doing? I'm doing just great. Uh, I noticed that you were having some topics regarding the Afghanistan war. Would you care to talk about that tonight? Oh, sure, sure. Go ahead and chime in. We were kind of focusing around the 11-year anniversary of it and the fact, you know, the vets had such a great, a great um, action in at 55 water and the arrests were uncalled for um, and we were just wondering what people were thinking about that well uh, I was flabbergasted that the police uh, when they arrested those veterans uh, there was no need for that to happen the veterans were exercising their first amendment rights uh, speaking out against the war um, there could have been some more due diligence to give the veterans uh, time to finish the process, the protest there. There was no reason to arrest the veterans. It's another example of using undue force against peaceful protesters. It was simple and cut. Well, and, and we were, you know, I think somebody just mentioned that there was about um, maybe a half hour left in the readings, and we, we thought it would be kind of a, a good chance to build some goodwill, um, you know, if the city had let them finish, but for them to come in uh, so unreasonable. And, you know, we had a lot of lot of friends there. Stop Motion Solo was arrested. Um, I, I know Margaret Flowers and Kevin Zeese were there. I don't know if they were among the yeah. arrestees, but it was a very poignant yeah. ceremony. Um, what was the yeah. response... That were you guys watching it? Um, you know, the vets in Freedom Plaza were they tuned into that? And what did they have to say about it? We were we were paying attention. I think Margaret Flowers was the last person arrested. Um, as you know, Micah Turner, who is a veteran of the actually he's a veteran of both the Iraqi and the Afghanistan wars, and he made a statement there, a very prophetic statement about his feelings about the war, and he's actually an active duty soldier. He's on AWOL status right now. Oh, yeah. And he made a statement. Um, a lot of us are completely in solidarity with the, the protest. The veterans, in fact, right now we're having a protest outside the Veterans Administration headquarters building here in Washington, D.C. And it's going on right now. I just came from there. There are about 10 to 15 people staying there at night on the sidewalk in front of the building. And not all of them are veterans. What's amazing is that a lot of the occupiers have decided to stay with them in solidarity with the vets. But there are some veterans from both the Vietnam, the Gulf Wars, and some recent wars that have been fought. They're all out there supporting veterans. They're talking about issues to the public as they come by. Some of those issues include suicide, the fact that 18 veterans a day on average kill themselves, the fact that veterans are at a very high statistical rate of homelessness in this country, higher than the average. Um, and those are issues that need to be addressed. They need to be corrected. Well, we couldn't, uh, couldn't agree more, and it's um, great to have, have your input on that um, and your observations. And um, I I can't remember if we spoke of this uh, before or not. I, are you a vet? I couldn't remember. Yes, I was. I was. Uh, I served in the Marine Corps uh, for four years, approximately four years active duty, and I think it was two years in active reserve. So yeah, I'm. I'm a veteran as well. Yep. So you can speak to it from a position on on both sides of the equation, which I think is important. So. I uh, really appreciate you calling in and giving us your thoughts, and you guys stay strong in D.C. and uh, keep in touch. Thank you, John. We certainly will. Thank you so much for taking my call. Oh, sure. Give our best to everybody there. Thank you so well, much, John. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> okay, that was our friend John Zangus out of uh, D.C. John always has some thoughtful and reflective commentary on that um, I think it's it's great um, when we have people that have participated in both sides of, of the struggle um, if you were not uh, 
of that are in the military. Um, it's hard to imagine that side of it. Um, I think you have to to um, experience it to get the full picture. And yeah, just, and uh, another thing, I'm sorry, I just wanted to, Mouse brought this up, that that was a war m memorial, that park. So it was even like more, it, that park is there for veterans, a memorial to the fallen heroes. The fact that they wouldn't allow the veterans to use that public space for this kind of thing, all they wanted to do was finish their ceremony. You know, oh. it was, it's just really quite disgusting and shameful. I just think it's shameful. Um, that's a, that's a good summary of it, shameful. Even, <sighs> you know, you guys know Mrs. Artister doesn't um, participate heavily in the show or in the movement, but she even had some commentary about that and um, we were making the observation of how our government takes these these guys and women that volunteer that volunteer they send them through all the training and everything they send them overseas to places that, that you can't even imagine in your worst nightmare all this stuff happens to them even if they're not hurt mentally I mean if they're not hurt physically there is a, a a mental and emotional change that comes by being in that environment and then they come back home and they're just mostly discarded I'm not saying that we should welcome them as returning heroes but we should welcome them and and everybody with a level of re respect and gratitude and so our our government is like a big war machine it just takes it takes these these components which are consumable goods it sends them over there they do their work and we bring them back over here and they're broken and worn out and just you know maybe defective in you know some way shape or form um, you know to, to put it in an engineering term and then they're thrown on the scrap heap it's just it's unconscionable and it is shameful and it's an embarrassing um, it's an embarrassing thing that our government does it really is, and, and I would even go a step further and say, these people are some of the most courageous, you know, I mean, they step up when other people don't. They give up their lives, the families of veterans that have to be without their loved ones. Um, they miss seeing their children's first steps, you know, I mean, they give up so much. Um, and then to be turned around and also, be redeployed five, six times. That is unprecedented in our history. It's, and um, you know, that's why you see so much damage coming from, from the vets mentally and physically. And, and the, turn the turnarounds on those deployments are completely unreasonable too. And uh, speaking from experience, I was deployed twice in uh, four years. Um, and these guys are coming in and getting deployed, you know, year back to back to back with only 30, 60, 90 days at home, maybe six months at best. And, and to be honest, all that does is give a family <coughs> not even an opportunity to reequate and get back in a, a, a rhythm it just it just adds to the chaos so very important to remember not only the vets but all the affected families around that and that's extended extended families so um, you know it's just another thing we need to speak up and highlight about yeah so are you ready to transition to our next segment yeah I think that's 15 Unless minutes thank you John for calling call. in on that is anybody did anybody else want to call and weigh in on the um, Afghanistan and veterans um, we'll take that call so All right. if not we're going to move ahead we'll go ahead and move on <clears throat> and our next segment is um, over the last week it seems like we've seen a lot of attacks on our citizen independent journalists so you want to take this mark and yeah, um, so I was just thinking uh, last night when I got the text that uh, Lorenzo and Elizabeth were arrested. In the past week or so, there's been 
quite a large amount of streamers arrested. Um, let me pick up this. Ping. Accept. Press one. Okay. Do we have ping or mouse? You have ping. Okay. Can, ping can you hold ready? on just Hi, a second? Ping. I want to. I want to finish my thought, and then we'll turn you loose. How's okay. that? Okay, um, so just to set the context, this seems to have started with uh, Michael Pella out in San Francisco um, being caught up in that situation. And as I understand it, he has three felony charges against yes, him. Yes, he does. All that, that is just, you know, it's, it's completely bogus. Then we follow that by, you know, Matt Stop Motion Solo getting arrested there with the vets. Um, oh, I'm not for. And then we um, follow that with um, uh, Mary Nichols out in Portland getting harassed not once but twice in a pretty severe manner uh, during the vigil. And that was within 24 hours of each other. I mean, she was harassed by the Portland police. Well, in 99, um, Mary, who was actually... That one. 99, who is so one of their... you have to fill in on that one. One of the um, one of the streamers, yeah. yeah, one of the vigil te uh, team streamers. He was arrested twice, and they took his equipment. Are we on? So he doesn't have the equipment. Sorry, I can't. Oh, Ping can't hear me talking, oh. guys. <laughs> um, so anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there about Mary and ninety nine and uh, the attack there in Portland on the streamers. So go ahead, Mark. Yeah, and so then we have L and E. So. I think what we're we're seeing, oh, it looks like you dropped out. Uh oh, <laughs> not good. Hang on, everybody. Do we still have I audio? Will. Do we still have audio? No, we Black lost screen, everything. Dead air. Okay, let me restart. Ping, sorry to put you on hold. That's okay. Well. I wanted to finish, finish getting, getting the context. <laughs> so we got the women's live streamer panel coming up. Let's um, see. We should be coming back on here in a second. Can you guys hear us? Audio is back, and we're waiting for video to come back. So, but just if we have audio, um, I'll go go ahead and wrap up my introduction. So w we have instances of significant harassment of, of independent journalists, which is becoming more broad spread, widespread and seems to be pretty targeted. And this is not limited to just the live streamers. We know there's some, some bloggers and writers that have been affected too. And the thing that, um, that I really want to point out is in every case, every case, these guys have been arrested or harassed because somebody doesn't want the stories they are broadcasting to come out. And I think that's an important fact to remember. Um, Keystone Pipeline, a great example. If it wasn't for L&E being there, bringing media out of there, who would know? Because the, the conception around the the United States is Keystone Pipeline is not, you know, underway yet. The politicians will lead you to believe that. Uh, there's a lot of focus on the northern part of the country. We're not going to build the pipeline. We're not going to do any of this until decisions are made. But they are actually in construction in Texas now. And the only way we know that is because there are people down there on the ground bringing that story out to us. So um, harassment of the independent journalists is a deliberate suppression of free speech and real news. And that's my two cents. So, Ping, you have the floor. Go ahead, Ping on okay. stack. Okay. First thing I have to tell you, usually everybody knows I'm a live wire. Once I saw, I watched Michael fall down, being pushed out. He went down so fast, it was shocking to my system. And I went into deadly calm mode, which is unusual, but when that happens, watch out. Since he got out, I have been begging him to go for medical evaluation. 
He has not done it. I have been in contact with Michael. This morning, or last night, when Lorraine Crum and Elizabeth were arrested, after seeing Matt arrested, I, I just went into action. And Ruby Tuesday and I got numbers, put them out, tweeted them everywhere, constantly. I mean, one person told me I had put it on my Facebook 70 times to give us a call. Okay? <laughs> I mean, that was it. I was focused, razor sharp. I called. I actually spoke to a judge who was a magistrate, but it was not her day today. They gave me the wrong number. And she told me that her family had been paid for their easement. I mean, you don't know what I have been through in the last 24 hours. Uh -huh. But with everybody joining together, everybody joining our voices as one to these calls, we got Elizabeth and Lorenzo's charges dropped. Not only that, they got so sick of hearing it, they actually let Elizabeth call me this morning from the jail, where I could assure her that she had support. And she said, yeah, we have jail support. I said, you've got much more than jail support. And if you go to the Keystone XL site now, they're even saying it was because of an uproar in social media. And that was Ruby Tuesday and myself. Now we need a few more. Tomorrow, most people don't know, is the date that the people from the Winter Garden from last December go back to court where they made Justin into a Gumby, if you all remember that one, and attacked all our strangers. That was our first attack. Tomorrow is their court date. Now we've got a precedent with Elizabeth and Lorenzo being freed because they are press. And that's what we stress. We said they are reporters. We are their subscribers. And I don't care if you partake in the chat, if you bought them a pizza, we are their subscribers and added an air of legitimacy to this. This is what we did. This is how we got it done. And we got it done. Somebody else said to me, well, every state has their right, you know, with all the different state laws, but not with freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is guaranteed in the Constitution. Constitutional right does not guarantee people to have gay marriage. Constitutional right does not guarantee people to have all these other rights that we take for granted and think are national. But this does. This is First Amendment right. Our next step is tomorrow morning. Anybody who can call the DA or the judges in New York, I don't have their numbers. I'll leave that up to the people there. I'll do the Winter Garden. After this, we have. Michael. His arraignment is Friday. Friday, folks. We have to call. We have to call the state investigator and we have to call the district attorney. This is beyond my comprehension what they have done to Michael. Now, the Huffington Post actually had Michael down as, are you ready? Okay. Number three kingpin in Black Box in San Francisco. <laughs> Huffington Post. The Huffington Post put that out. Yes, and guess what? There's no way to call them. I'm putting up the criminal investigator's name and number right now. I'd appreciate if you have a copy and keep putting it up, and Ruby keep putting up the district attorney. Now, we tried. Michael and I have been in close contact. I mean, shoulder to shoulder in chat all day. We tried 75 ways to fund it until we ended up having to resort to email because Huffington Post is impossible to reach by phone. They have corrected the story. But they and already they already distributed it, and that's that's a good a good point to make. And be, before I forget about it, I want to congratulate all of you on such a good action. As as far as all the calls and the coordination of information and you're right we need to do more of that because speaking with a collective voice does make a difference so the I call could believe they let me speak to Elizabeth but I figured that must have been when they started to realize they better buckle you know 
<laughs> I would love to just put a shout out to have it's, Ruby it's call. Incredible just to speak to her, you know, and let her know that we had her back. And we have to do this for Michael. We have to do a big, big effort tomorrow and get him free. Three felony charges for a streamer, and he was on the sidewalk. I watched his stream. I also watched him guy called P Sales uh, uh, stream. And the, the attack of the police on the people on the sidewalk was horrifying. But it was also very apropos and it was under all these staple signs. It was like, oh my God, corporate America, and here's the prisoner sitting there underneath the staple signs. I don't know if anybody else picked up on that. Michael is very upset, very, very upset, and Michael is in a very important meeting right now. I'm just letting you all know it's a very important meeting that can turn the key to this whole thing, and I cannot talk about it, but we must go after the investigators whose number I put up, and we must all call the district attorney. We must begin this tomorrow as soon as possible. We must flood them. We must get people from all over the country to get this for Michael also. And we have a precedent now from Texas. And, and I think that's important that when we do these calls, and I would also like to suggest do not underestimate the power of jamming up fax machines. Um, that's oh, you know, I'll tell you, I don't believe this, but I'm I'm a fan of a black fax when they don't do what I want, and that is you go into you make the page completely black, print it out, and just keep watching it. Eat up your ink, eat up your paper. Who cares? They don't care about us. That's a good. <laughs> that's a good tactic. Um, and I wanted to. To let everybody know, for those of you who haven't met him personally, I know a lot of the New York folks have, but Michael is just the nicest guy in person. He is absolutely not a troublemaker. He is absolutely not an agitator. He he is a mild-mannered, quiet guy just trying to do good work. So, um, you know, just, just the... The levels of BS involved with his charges are astonishing. So we do need to give him support. Also, I want to encourage people, along with the calls and stuff, um, last night I was tweeting Democracy Now! and On the Media um, because these are journalists. Democracy Now! and On the Media have a journalistic focus. Um, they respond when journalists are being harassed. So I encourage you guys, when you're tweeting out information and everything, make sure you're hitting them up because I have a, an idea that the more of that information they see coming through their feeds, the more awareness they're going to get. And I would love to get those guys, some of them, to do stories on this, this trend. And I know that's a personal interest of Amy Goodman. So, um, Mr. Artister, can I tell you that's in the works? Sure. That'd be great. I love yes. that. <laughs> Excellent. It's in the works. Good. It's in the works. Um, I really wish with all my heart Caligotti was listening to this program. He thinks that nobody is behind his son. Yeah. Well, he's, you know, Michael's a long way from home, and I'm suspecting he doesn't get to see this, but, you know, our he'll, he'll know if we can if we can create action on his behalf so so that's one of the questions that I have that uh, could not be answered because she was in a jail cell I really want the answer is they were shining those floodlights on the tree toppers which is what I call the people who were living in the trees and when Elizabeth and Lorenzo were arrested it was pitch black hmm. and they were moving around the ropes they were trying to climb down on yep. this is a disgrace what was done to, to Matt, arresting him? Why? Why? Because was he, he, was, he was filming something name? that people did not want to have made public, and that's the root issue of all this. And so I think the response to that is not only should we support and protect our journalists, but we need to get cameras and blogs out there in force around everybody. Now, I know when I first uh, had a discussion with Mouse when he was in Houston, 
and they did the red, red tent, he said something to me that, that stuck with me forever. And he said, everybody should have a cam. That's true. When they go to these actions. Everybody. And I don't want to take up all your time, but I've been very involved in this. I want you to know I need everyone. I need everyone tweeting. I need everyone on Facebook. I need everyone doing email blasts. I need everyone calling their friends. We need a massive, massive call in tomorrow to San Francisco to save Michael. We truly do, and we can't let anything hurt him. He's 100 million percent innocent. Yep, and I want to encourage everybody um, in uh, Overcome, just put the, the DA number up there. When you call in, be polite, but be emphatic, and you know, just make a statement, you know, just make them listen to you, and we well, repeat over and over. Listen. And that, that they were there is very trust polite. Yeah. They were very polite. The people that was, that I spoke to in Texas, they were very very polite. Uh, even though they were telling me that, you know, I mean, I was talking to a judge, and they're sitting there telling me that their family got paid for their reason and all this. I mean, you know, and I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter. These are journalists, and we are their subscribers. They are press, yep. and that turned the key move and it worked so congratulations on that think so tomorrow anybody in the new york area because new york does not pay attention to anybody without a new york number i happen to still have a new york number so anybody tomorrow who gets new york numbers put them up because i will call okay okay that sounds great right. thank you so much Thank you for calling in, and I'm guessing you'll be on Occupello and on Facebook tomorrow so people can connect with you there and you can help coordinate this, this action. To yeah, work. I also yeah. have to interview 15 people tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have a busy job day. between 10 and 2, yep. <laughs> but I'm going to have it up anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for calling, Pink. Thank you, Pink. <laughs> Love you, dear. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. Okay, so... Um, so that was a, a good overview, and I think it speaks to the to the power of what can happen across the ether. But eventually, it needs to come down to being analog. It comes down to person and to person in a conversation. So, thank you, Ping and Ruby, for for leading the way on that. It was absolutely amazing. The turnaround time. I want to make the point too that. Uh, Zena and I were talking about this. The whole situation with Lorenzo and Elizabeth was a little bit sketchy because there was a a mix of you know state police and federales and and this this pipeline security force. That yeah, was, the Trans Canada um, Security. Yeah, which You're I like, read what? today were a bunch of off-duty police and sheriffs department that um, we're getting paid thirty dollars an hour and and you know it kind of confused me it's like who arrested them it was very shady very very uncertain so it's well and it's, just the yeah. whole thing surrounding it the fact that you know they came in and they came in camouflage and elizabeth and lorenzo were getting down as journalists the fact that they arrested them at all was just unreal I mean, and Lorenzo is saying, I'm a journalist, you know, trying to get out of the way, like, um, and so it's just wonderful that the DA understood what happened and the and charges recognized. got dropped. Yeah. Yep. Um, so um, do we want to get another call in on this or we can move in to the next segment? I just want to encourage everybody to support new media in any possible way, you know, there are eyes and ears, and they're becoming more and more critical as the year weighs on. I think, um, you know, once the, the novelty of, um, you know, there early on was a whole lot of people streaming, and those numbers have dwindled just like everything else. But the people that are left are pretty hardcore and pretty committed, so it's really important that we try to support them, keep them connected, and, you know, respond when when they need us as much as possible. All right, I got another call coming in. Call from John Red. To accept, press one to send a voicemail. Great, so 
That's our man Johnny. That is John Mead, or Johnny Greed, or, or JB the worker, Jersey John. Yeah. How are you doing tonight, uh, sir? Uh, I'm, you, I'm turning my computer down. I'd like to say hello, a shout out to Oz. I see her out there, and she came because of my invite. I, I put it out there and got her back in. I love seeing her red out there. <laughs> and uh, it, this is so awesome that uh, you know, what, what King and Ruby did, and uh, getting validating, legitimizing the new media coming up. And this is, uh, it struck me just today, you know, uh, you, know you see a mushroom and, and there's nothing there and the next morning they're out there. But what happens is there's a whole network of roots, the mycelium that are growing underground and, and living off the decay that's there, the decay of our society as a symbolic uh, parallel there. But uh, we are all part of that, that network of, of, of roots underneath. And who knows when or mushrooms come up and, and spread up overnight apparently to the people who, who only see what happens above the ground but every one of you out there is so important that you're part of the the root system the network underground and, and we're all golden and, and we're going to make we need a new media because the old media isn't working for us and the truth will have its way and then we're going to be the way and there's going to be a new world order but it's not going to be the one that they're looking for it's going to be one that we want and uh, I don't know. I just love all you guys, and uh, you know, this is this, this is the segment that I that would, I would have to call in on. So I just wanted to reach out to you guys before you moved on. And Mark, and I, clearly, thank you for watching me on the Titan Pad. Oh, and Oz, if you want to talk, I'm on the Titan Pad. I can type in there without having to sign in. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye, well, all you guys. Call, you keep up the good work. Most excellent. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Johnny. All right, bye, bye. So that was our friend Johnny Greed, who, who you know, uh, we kind of know his story on him, and he he claims he's a lurker, but he's becoming more more active. I think you know, the call-in <laughs> shows appeal to him, so it's good to hear his voice. Um, That's great. And uh, Mouse, were you going to call in on this, or should we move move on to the next segment? We, we I would love program. to hear Ruby's version of her story too. Okay. okay. She should well, call in. See what Mouse has to say. Awesome. To accept, press one. So uh, I got it figured out. Now the second call is always going to be the mouse man. Hi, mouse. How are you doing? Uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm enjoying uh, being in my long underwear for a change because it's gotten freaking cold down here, and I hate <laughs> the cold being a Texan. Um, but no, I seriously on this issue. Ever since they put the red tent over the occupiers at the the closing of the port action in solidarity with the other port closers, um, it has been my main focus to inform everybody, carry a camera, whether it's a still camera, a video camera, a cell phone camera, any kind of recording device that will record what's going on, especially a video recording device, is I, a, I cannot stress enough how important that is. Because if it hadn't been for the fact that Michael had a camera, we would not have known what happened to him. If it hadn't been for the fact that Elizabeth and Lorenzo, Lorenzo, uh, if, they, if they hadn't had a camera, we would never have known what happened to them. It's that important. The more people, be, uh, the more people have cameras. The more people who are able to document this, the the better the case will be when it comes time for us to lay the smack down on these idiots. And I, I think it's going to be exceptionally critical that we start documenting every little detail. Even the ones who are idiots that are supposed to be occupiers, uh, I don't care who it is. If you're acting like an idiot, but you're calling yourself an occupier, you're just an idiot. But it needs to be all documented. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Good point. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, well, thank you for your call and stay warm. You know, it's getting. We had snow up on Roan Mountain this morning. So, oh, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, just a dusting, but it's coming. So um, document, document, document. And let me tell you, share the stories. 
share yes. the stories because if you don't share them, they did not happen. That's it. That's correct. You have to document it, and then you have to put it somewhere where other people can see it. And uh, there is one other thing that I wanted to address that is not entirely related to this, but it, it does have some importance to the Occupy movement in general. Um, Ping has told me that for most political actions to have any kind of an effect, the general lifetime of it takes around 12 years. The internet accelerates that to a degree that is unprecedented in history. We can now get more information out to more people at such a rate that literally overnight we can have people pulled out of jail, charges dropped, and police saying, we're sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you couldn't do that Exactly. A decade ago. That's true. That's true. And I think it's incumbent to mention the flip side of that is the speed of the Internet can work for us, but it also can work against us, and it's really necessary to be factual and not to, you know, just jump on any bandwagon. And, you know, we need to be uh, responsible with how we use it because of the speed of it, because of, you know, take the Huffington Post thing for example that went on their blog I guess and they labeled Michael as a number three guy which is completely untrue and then it spread and then to, to clean up after that is a lot more complicated than to um, you know, put it out there to start with so when we're sharing information and passing it around let's make sure it's accurate yes and we also have to remember that the sheeple of America and the sheeple of the world at large have a 30 second memory span anything that catches their attention in that 30 seconds is essentially burned into their brain and they will not let go of it now if it's factual um they they, they might do some research but if it's bs they'll accept it as the truth and move on like the the Huffington Post and like the the other one uh, I forget which one it was where it said uh, occupier smash windows and then they had to retract and say no nope, it wasn't them it was somebody else. But it, but and, it already has planted the seed into people's mind. It's crazy. Right. So we have to be very <laughs> very vigilant in the the investigative part of it. We have to be more than just documentaries we have to be investigative journalists where we go in there and before we actually put that information out we have to know that what we're putting out is spot on accurate and irrefutable now some people will try to debunk it or debate it and, and use side tactics to say well they were with the group that was doing all of this and use that as a distraction but it doesn't work if your facts are right and can be researched properly right also um i want to throw out while we're on you know because this this whole new media thing is a big interest of mine think about the outlets that you're contacting when you're tweeting or when you're blogging or when you're facebooking think about outlets that would be receptive to us like i said democracy now um, on the media, Truth Out, Truth Dig, places like that. It just tag them a little bit. You never know what they may pick up. And the more that we can get in to the uh, mainstream flow, truthful and accurate information, the better off everybody's going to be. Yep. Now, there is one last thing that I would like to add on the, the independent journalist and this is both a good and a bad thing in regards to the Huffington Post. I like that the Huffington Post is actually taking live streamers footage and making legitimate use of it. I dislike the fact that they're not doing it properly in that, you know, like with, with that first part, they didn't do the due diligent part of making sure what they were reporting was factual. They just put it out there 
and put a tagline out there, and then it comes back, and then they have to say, oh, sorry, we were wrong. Um, this is what really happened. And unfortunately, it was too late by then. Yeah. So it, it, on the plus side, it is a, a legitimate media outlet now. It legitimizes everybody who uses the Ustream setup because they are now independent journalists working for the Huffington Post, but the Post does not always do the right thing. So you have to weigh the pros and cons of being part of that group. Um, that's a good point, and it also brings to mind a larger thing in that, that I was uh, talking about when we were in Charlotte. Mainstream media is fundamentally lazy, so we can use that to our advantage, too. So don't hesitate to feed them a link, feed them a story. Those guys are sitting there just kind of looking for anything they can put up in their dead time, so my, we might as well give them, like, the truth about Michael's situation. We can, we can seed those places where they get in broader circulation. Circulation is key. But it's got to be truthful, it's got to be accurate, and it has to be well-sourced. So, yep. th Thank you very much for calling in tonight, Mouse. It's good to hear you. Thank you, Mouse. I told you I'd be calling in every time you do one of these, so expect <laughs> me to be here next time. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you so time. much. You too. Um, so I think, Z, do you want to move on to the next segment? Um, I don't know. What are people feeling like? Because I don't mind just running this through to the end if you, and we can push our other things out. Right. Because we're running on, what, 10 minutes left? Yeah. Yeah, we can uh, stay on this topic if some other people want to call in and weigh in on it. Um, I would love to hear Ruby's story. And, oh, it's a um, really great story, Rubes. You should call. I mean, it it's just shows the power of what we can do and how how we can do it right um, and, and a victory for freedom of the people rising up and speaking out uh, you know we should make that point too. all right I have a call coming in call from ruby ah there she is Except press one <laughs> okay ruby you're on tell us your story oh no, she's off. <laughs> oh, call back. <laughs> Did she get stage fright? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, call back, Ruby. Maybe I maybe I mashed the button incorrectly or something. That was that call could back, have very Rubes. well. Yeah, we're having. We'll uh, wait on you. Yeah. I I love the story that because I was listening to Ruby talk and and Acapello, and it's a story of connection too, which is great. Oh, that's good. That's no. good. Um, and oh. I would, if anybody, Can't she, see the screen? On she needs the number. Oh, okay. Hang on a second. Are you doing it? Yeah. Okay. I'm I hear it clickety clickety. Yeah. If anybody has, um, if anybody knows what Carlisle's situation is and wants to speak to that and how, you know, just for yeah, if there's anything or we can do to help him out or. Whatever. I, I hadn't heard anything about that yet. Yeah, I hadn't either. So I would really like to be able to give him support if we can. While we're waiting, up. Oh, let's try this one. Answer. Call from Ruby. Okay. Accept. Press one. This is voice. Hello, Ruby. You're on. Hello. Good evening, dear. How are you? Doing okay. How are you? We're good. So tell Maybe. us tell us what your experience was. We would love to hear. Well, I think the thing that makes me the happiest about it, obviously I love Elizabeth and Lorenzo and half from the beginning, but I think for me, there's a lot of stuff that I can't do, and this is one of the things that I can do because I can work a phone. And ping laid the numbers out, and we just, did what we had to do and finally got back you know I got a phone call back from the district attorney's uh, secretary and she said based on the information that we've received that um, they are in fact journalists um, were in, and that uh, they fall under the um, first 
First Amendment uh, rights, we are uh, dropping the charges and they'll be released momentarily. So that made me very happy. Excellent. Excellent. And so did you engage in a conversation with somebody on the other end or was it just brief? Oh, no, I called. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to three different magistrates' offices and the prosecutor's office and the jail twice. So I had been, I'd been round and round, and um, the district attorney's office finally took my name and number, and they did call me back, and they let them go, so it all worked out well. I think that's pretty impressive, and, and good on you all for, for doing that. And I think it's a uh, – I hope we're getting uh, – broadcast on some other channels because maybe it's like the first example of how how people can come together in the ether from all over and actually effect a positive change in a situation so we'll keep our fingers crossed and I'm really really proud and humbled to to know you guys that have have done that and now everybody banded together it's a really great example so thank you so much for your participation in that it was my pleasure and i'm just glad that they're out and and uh, anytime anybody gets arrested just tweet pingy and we'll get on it <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's it you all know. right uh, thank you. You. have a good night thank you for calling good to go. Bye. so that oh, was ruby it's good good to hear for from her and glad that she's up and doing well and so um we only have a few more minutes, so I think we can effectively uh, push the other two segments to another night. And um, I would, if anybody has any background on Carlisle's situation, call in. And while we're waiting for that, should I promo tomorrow night, Z, or do you want to do that? Um, yeah, you can do that. Um, and also, anybody else that's out there that just wants to chime in, anything that you would like to say, anything you've witnessed or anything else, just give us a call because we really yeah. want to hear your voices, guys. Yeah, feel free to give us a call. So tomorrow night we have a really good show, and uh, uh, Zena and I um, were, you know, really happy to finally make this connection and uh, we will be talking to and interviewing Mary Nichols, who is from Visual TV out in Portland. And Mary, as you remember, was on the uh, stream, the women's streamer panel that Sue's put together some months ago. Um, and she couldn't spend a long time with us because she had to go out in the field. Well, they've gotten a few more for helpers. And um, so she has a night was, uh, so she can uh, spend it with us and so we've had the opportunity to have some conversations with her in researching this um, I have to tell you the work she's doing is absolutely incredible and she is a strong strong smart woman um, oh, she man been she's a, been through it <laughs> she has been through it this week so <laughs> it's incredible so she's going to have a pretty big story to tell and good overview and it so in if you guys have time tomorrow and you can check out the vigil tv website where you can find the um youtube channel and of course their live stream channel and my understanding is she has over 300 interviews with the um and i'm gonna get this right that we do not call them homeless we refer to them as houseless and yep. she's going to tell us about some of these people she's met, some of the challenges they've endured, her uh, challenges with the local Portland PD. Um, it, it is really unbelievable, and I have much respect for the work that she and that other part of the vigil team are doing. Um, just really, really strong and really, really impressive. And it shows, yet again, what one person can do um yeah and i was looking at the she um uploaded i think like 60 videos or something crazy onto her the youtube channel i think it's occupy vigil tv um is the name of the channel on youtube if you guys get a chance go through and look at some i mean she, it's amazing it's really beautiful to watch how she humanizes the people and how their stories come across and the importance of what they're doing there it's it's wonderful 
And I, I also want to encourage people to watch it just to see the evolution of a documentarian because she started out with no experience and she just she did the same thing she worked she worked she worked and um, then you know she's developed a voice she's developed an eye she knows how to talk to people she knows how to engage and it's an example of what we can do um, so that's tomorrow night also I want to give a shout out to Occupy World News Now you guys know that they're um, really a big supporter of OPN um, they are going to be going live with a new show four times a day. And I forget when the date that is um, starting. If Georgia, if you are one of the, or clearly if you know uh, when that new show is going to start. So I want to encourage everybody to October 15th. So I want to encourage everybody to support them. Um, I think it's going to be really good. Occupy World News Now does an excellent job. Um, they work really hard, and we're really happy to be associated with them. Thank you guys for being supportive of us, and I want all the OPM folks and anybody else that's watching on Global or any of the other channels to help, um, you know, support their endeavor. Um, very important, and I think if we can band together some of these channels where we all participate in, then we might have a good collective force to, uh, to make some good stuff happen. So you just got to believe and you got to try. Game-changing day today. Ping leading the way. She, Ping is the sharp end <laughs> of the stick today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> so you got anything else, C? Uh, no. Are we doing a show Sunday as well? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Sunday, I'm going to be doing a live show from the Firestorm Collective in Asheville. There's a wholly owned workers collective, which means everybody in the organization owns part of it. It's not a co-op. It is a collective. There is a distinction. Um, they are a cafe and anarchist bookstore and community meeting place for progressive groups in the heart of Asheville, and they've been up and running since 2008. They have just recently renovated their space, so I'm actually going in on Sunday afternoon. We're going to interview the collective members, find out how a collective happens, how it's put together, how they operate, and their challenges and successes. Um, and again, the local responses to um, global issues. Um, they're a really well-recognized organization of their small and fierce and do good work in the community. And as part of that, it looks like Friday night that I'm going to go, they're having a CD release party as a... Um, benefit fundraiser for that and I'm going to interview the artists and then part of the show and so pay attention to our web page and uh, my tweets and I think I'll be interviewing the artists around 6 o'clock Friday evening again live on the scene I'm going to go to Asheville and do that and um, then part of the show from 7 till probably 8 so if you guys want something to do on uh, Friday evening that might might be um, something interesting. So it's going to be a Firestorm Cafe weekend. So thank you for reminding me of that. So that's oh, Friday yeah. evening or so, and then Sunday afternoon matinee show, 4 p.m. the live interview. So thank you for reminding me about that. Oh, and also I wanted to remind everybody that we're we are trying to get together um, a panel show. We work starting once a month. Uh, like a community panel um, and here's a link for you guys so you can check it out um, we would love to uh, get your guys's um, input on certain topics so um, it's going to be a Google Hangout so you'll need to have a Google Plus and a webcam or audio you can have a picture you don't have to have a webcam so. And we will help you with all the tech support, so exactly. you know, don't worry about that. Um, and 
So this Just will send be us the an panel email. discussion will be much more interesting if there's a panel. So you guys yeah, can we need we need people, guys. Get together <laughs> and chime in. Um, and in that vein, uh, clear clearly has a pad up tonight. We would love to solicit you know ideas from you guys if you want to throw it on the pad tonight for show topics that you would like to hear. Um, and we like to do the weekly shows, the Wednesday night shows. We like those to be you know fairly like current events so if you have any ideas of course we'll be doing stuff around elections etc but just any other current events you can email any of us and we'll roll them into the show we like to have that pretty much decided on the monday before the wednesday show and um so this is this is your channel so let us know what you'd like to talk about Especially the call-in show, you know, exactly. let's do that. Anybody so, knows anybody who would be great for an interview too, let us know. We're up for hearing stories from people. We, you know, we would love to expand outside. So if you guys have anybody, just send us an email and we'll get back with you. And, um... Oh, Tuesday's the Hostra. Okay, Sue, you want to put that on in, in bold if you have a link or, or something? I know you guys are going to stream. It doesn't fit in the schedule, <laughs> for goodness sakes. Um, yeah, the Hofstra occupied the debate, which is uh, Susie Q, I think, hand to mouth, overcome greed. Um, I think Nate is going up there to stream it. There's going to be a lot of activity around that. So let's try to be supportive of that. And um, if you guys want, I have, I didn't tell Z this, but I have this great little little story to share with you just on media distribution if anybody cares to hear it. Um, of course. To hang around and tell. So I did a show last night with some of my friends from Bread and Puppet. They did a horse-drawn wagon show, so it was all, you know, it was outdoor, and it was all low-tech, and it was shadow puppets, blah, blah, blah. And it was a great event. Um, one of the fellows there that I know um, has a girlfriend that lives in Mexico, and so in the winters, they go to Mexico and live in the mountains with the indigenous people of, Yucatan descent, uh, Yucatan Indian descent, and um, what they do is they have a little community theater, and they write, you know, they write shows, and rehearse and produce, and they do this with all the local people because all these people are farmers, and they can't farm in the winter, so this is this is what they do. So uh, Gabe and Theresa have been putting on these shows for ten years. So I asked them this morning at breakfast. I said. How how's that going? And he said, well, you know, it's kind of changed because it's getting so dangerous there that they can't gather people together in any amount. You know, more than two or three people together become a target for the cartels and just all kinds of nonsense. Very, very dangerous. So they can't do shows. They can't rehearse. They can't perform in a group. They can't get an audience it, it is I who knew right I mean this is this is daily life in that part of Mexico so being great and all their shows are political and social content so for instance um, the only news these people get about their government is through these shows um, so Gabe and Teresa got together and they were like, what can we do? Because we can't put ourselves or these people at risk, but this information needs to be, um, needs to be communicated. Um, they got together, got in the workshop, and they built what we that do that kind of work call crankies. And what a cranky is, is a suitcase. And inside the suitcase is like an endless scroll, and it has a crank on the top. So you would set the suitcase you know, on the edge up on the table so the big white, you know, wide screen is facing, you drop the front down, and it's like, imagine a, a TV, only no electronics. And then somebody cranks the handle, thus the name Cranky, right? So they wrote this show, they figured it all out, they painted these elaborate scrolls and 
scenes and did some writing um, and, and all that because this had to be communicated visually. Um, they made 20 of them exactly alike. A show that takes an hour to crank and then they went out in the countryside and they dropped these crankies off with families in the villages. So now they're distributing the media via the most basic uh, technology, which is no technology at all. Each family in the village gets the cranky and they show it, you know, and they get the story and they get, and this is current information, right? This is, this is what's happening, you know, riots in the street in Mexico City and the economy and all that rolled up into one like an hour-long documentary in visual uh, visual presentation. The family watches it, and inside the suitcase itself, there's a notebook, and people can write their thoughts and everything on it, and their commentary, like their editorials, and then they give it to the next family. And so these crankies make their way around through the villages, so everybody in the village gets to see the story so that they can have conversation at the wells. They can have conversation at the market. They don't put themselves at risk, but they're getting the information. Once the village is finished with the cranky, then it goes to another village. 20 crankies out spreading the word. It's, it's their analog internet. And so this is what I'm talking about, message distribution. Think of the way to tell these stories all these stories, Elizabeth and Lorenzo's stories, Michael's stories, the vet stories, you know, John Zangus, there's a million stories out there and we need to get them out as far and wide in any method possible. So there's my story oh, from that was the mountains awesome. of Mexico. And <laughs> true story, it happens, you know, so there we go. So that's my wrap for the night. That's I've amazing. talked enough. <laughs> That was pretty pretty amazing. So um, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. It was good to spend the evening with you. Thank you for the support. Yeah. Um, don't forget to join our website if you haven't already. Yep. Thanks, and guys. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating, too. It was really great to see everybody here and everybody having good conversation. Um, and we would totally love to hear from you call in so don't be shy next time we want to hear you yep. jump in and everybody remember ping is spearheading the next uh, long distance action to help our guys out thank you Occupy World News Now for streaming us thank you Rise for your support thank you clearly for being on task all you guys from New York Suze and DK and over it's good to see you guys I uh, hope uh, Occupy the Debates goes well for you. We'll be tweeting it out. Just give us the info. And thank you, Z. You did a great job for doing the production tonight. Much better than me. You can tell. It's just <laughs> like it's nice and it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do great. But it was fun doing it. Um, and I just wanted to tell everybody I love you all. And um, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow night for Mary. Yep. Good Mary, night, everybody. 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Good night, everybody.